Folks, let's move on right now. We go to TFNN.com. You're right over here to the services tab. We have these two fantastic webinars for you. These are secret signs of market tops with Tim Ord. And then we have the six secret ratios every trader should know with Tim Ord. We had a few signups for that, which is pretty solid. Um, people have been loving it. I really recommend doing it. If you want to see more from Tim Ord, it is Ord-Oracle.com is the place you got to go visit. We have Tim Ord on every Tuesday and Thursday. Tim Ord is on with us now. Tim, how are you doing? Good, good. How are you doing? Doing so, all right. Enjoying the weather. Let's break into this thing. This is, uh, right. I was looking at these charts. These are good stuff. So, Yeah, it's gonna, It's a little bit weird in here, uh, but yeah. uh, can you hear me okay? I can hear you perfectly. Can you hear me? All right. All right. Good. Yeah, good. I can hear you. So anyhow, first chart, chart number one, uh, the uh, top one is the RSI for the SPY. Next one to Downs, middle one is the SPY. Anyhow, the bottom one is a 10-day trend. Next one higher is a five-day trend. The next one higher is a two-day trend. And I always said, you know, panic always happens at bottoms. And, a tr and you need a trend reading 1.2 or higher on a daily basis to show panic. And so that's the reason why I... I put a 10-day, a five-day, and a two-day trend to watch what's going on here. And there's not a lot of panic in the market. But, you know, seasonality is actually pretty – Is actually this quarter going, to year, going into year end is the strongest quarter of the year. So of all the quarters, you know, this one is most of the time is up. So you got to take that into account. Um, and does it override the panic? I always said you have if you have no panic uh, – uh, if the market's going down, there's no panic. The market's going to keep going lower. Uh, and that's kind of what we have now here. The market really just didn't show any panic at the last low. Uh, so, so anyhow, let me keep putting some more information here. Right. If today's up, most likely we'll be, be up four days in a row. Uh, starting in uh, early November, like third or fourth, the market was up five days in a row. That predicts the market will be higher within five days, 73% of the time. Well, that five days actually stretched more like to 10 days, and maybe we're heading up here the, the 10 day period, I don't know. But if you get five days up in a row, or even four days up in a row, uh, there's a lot of momentum behind the market. And momentum kind of rules all the indicators. So that's one thing you got to weigh, but we have no panic at the last low, so you got to weigh that. So what's all this going to gel out to be? Yeah. Well, let's go to chart two. Okay. Um, okay, this is chart two, kind of a, a, a shorter term view here. But today's volume is probably not going to be higher than, than the previous two days. If you look at the uh, SPY chart, uh, uh, second window down from the top, we're jumping above the last four highs. And uh, to once you jump above a previous high, the volume should be at least equal, if not higher, going above the previous highs. Okay. And today's volume is probably not going to do that. So that, that would imply a false breakout to the upside. And last Friday, we had a selling climax. That's that I got pointed out on the volume chart. That's last Friday. And that's a big surge in volume. That meant exhaustion to the downside. Uh, uh, selling climaxes uh, can be identified when the volume jumps at least 30% or more compared to the previous volume days. And if you can see here, the volume jumped about 100%. So that was selling climax. That pretty much ended uh, the decline. And a lot of times there's a, there's a test of a selling climax low at some point. My view is if today's volume is low, uh, is less than yesterday and the day before its volume, you're going to come back down and test last Friday's low. Now, last Friday's low also came at support. And to get through last Friday's low, you're going to need volume equal to or greater than last Friday's volume. Well, last Friday's volume came in close to 80 million shares. So going into a holiday-type situation, because ne mm -hmm. uh, next Thursday is Thanksgiving, a lot of times the volume kind of drops off. Right. There's unlikely that you're going to push through last Friday's low and higher volume. So that's what that says is the support at 585 is going to be real strong because okay. the volume is not going to reach 80 million shares. So it's kind of a, kind of a zigzag just kind of blow up, up up here. I don't know. If, there's no guarantee we're going to pull back last Friday's low 
but there is a chance that that probability is open because of there was no panic trend-wise at that low. And volume so far is pretty much lackluster, jumping above some previous highs, which implies a false breakout. Right. So let's go down to the VIX uh, area also. Let me... Uh, yeah, go down to the VIX. Normally, today's rally, when I put this on, we're up 0.69%. Uh, if you look at the VIX, the VIX should be down today, and it's not. It's pretty much unchanged. Mm -hmm. So that's another kind of a warning sign. VIX is not doing what it's supposed to be doing. If the market goes up, VIX should be going down. If the market's going down, VIX should be going up. Here, the market's going up, and VIX is unchanged. So that kind of adds to the the possibility that this rally is probably not going to continue. It could be wrong. I am actually long on the SPX from a couple or uh, late October, uh, October 29th, I actually got long. Right. And I actually going to stay long because my downside is basically 585, which is selling climax low. And at worst case, that could be tested. Then we'll probably, if we do pull back to that low, most likely, I bet the trend jumps up to 1.2 or higher. So I, I think just kind of a whipsaw in here, but bigger trend remains up. It could, it could, it could get a little bit whippy here. So I'm not afraid of the uptrend continuing. I'm thinking this jump up today is probably not going to last. I so it could be wrong, but that's my view on the on the S and P's. Um, well, then do you want to yes. switch over to, I know we only got like about a minute left here, but we have the chart three as well. If you want to start with that, we can continue. When we get yeah, back chart break. three. So yeah. these are all the days uh, going back to May of this year, 10 days up, seven days up, seven days up, eight days up, you know, whatever. And today we're up four days. Can we be up again tomorrow? If we are, then that would actually add to the bullish case. But, you know, going in first of November uh, to uh Anyhow, you know, we're up five days, first part of November, November, probably third to the seventh or, or fifth or something, or eighth. We're up five days. And a lot of times, uh, the, the rules, actually, I, I hear the music. I yeah, wait. Tim, stay right there, folks. We'll be right back with Tim Ord uh, after this break. Welcome back, everyone. This is Jacob Shoup. You're watching the Tom O'Brien Show. We are joined right now by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. If you want to see more of his stuff, you can go to ord-oracle.com after the end of programming today and check out what else he has to offer. Tim, before we went to the break, we were on chart three, uh, looking at the SPY, SPY VIX with some selling climax and light volume. Right. Okay. So anyhow, first part of uh, November, we're up five days and kind of back Several, I don't know, several years ago, so that, uh, markets change over time, but they change slowly. They don't change abruptly. But about five years ago, I, uh, when the market was up five days in a row, the market was higher, 73% within five days. That five days now is stretched about 10 days. So I'm saying new highs is probably going to be seen, but it's going to take longer than five days, maybe 10, maybe 12. But you know, beginning of the month, we did have five days up. And maybe this is the rally that's going to make making new highs. I don't know, but we're up four days right now, so we do have a lot of momentum to the upside. So I guess the worst case scenario here is that the last Friday's low, which is around 585, give or take, uh, will, uh, could be tested before the rally begins. If the rally continues here. Um, is not as strong because we don't have a, a lot of panic in the trend. So that would mean kind of a an up market and it may come back down again. It may flip kind of a sideways market going into year end. That's how I'm interpreting it. Okay. The most bullish thing would, would happen if the market actually did turn around and, and go back down and test last Friday's low and the trend jumps up to around 1.2 uh, and that would give us some panic and actually in and in turn give us a stronger rally. So uh, the more panic you have, the stronger the rally becomes. So we don't have a lot of panic in the market right now. So that tells me, you know, even though the market's up, we're not going to, you know, I thought we may see 5% before the year's in or even long, uh, over bigger without having that trend up around 1.2 on the, you know, the two to five and 10 day period, at least one of them, then, uh, we may only see a couple 
percent higher than where we are right now so it okay. kind of weakens the uptrend i'll put it that way so that's the way you see that still bullish things may turn around we may still get to panic don't know um to me i'd like to actually see last friday's low uh tested and that trend jump up to like 1.5 or 1 point or 2.0 or something like that that would bode well for the the end of year rally don't know if that'll happen or not so but as it sets right now um at least at, at the moment i think we'll see at least new highs because of the five day five day up we had going into or starting first of uh, november and now we got four days up kind of adds to that sign so at minimum we should at least see the previous highs okay so we'll see what that happens if we keep going up here see a previous high volume kind of drops out i'll probably drop off that long position i have right so we'll have to wait and see so yeah does that fantastic. make it clear yeah no. actually you, you had uh, one person talk about had a question that's right what was that question again yeah, give me one second here i'll pull it up for you yeah this is from uh robert actually let me see just real quick So he's asking what your thoughts are on intraday market volatility, not just today, but through the past few days of this trading. You know, we had a lot of you know, volatility going up and then, of course, down. We had a gap back down from the gap up and then we're up again uh, today. And I think he's kind of curious what you think about that. Well, actually, yeah. So, uh, well, right now, since we don't have the trend where it needs to be, um, it kind of takes the strength out of that. So it kind of just answers that question, I guess. Right. It kind of takes the strength out of the rally going to year end. Of all the quarters of the year, this is supposed to be the strongest quarter. And without that panic in the market, this quarter may uh, be lackluster, I'll put it that way. So sure. we'll see how that turns out. But uh, there's nothing extremely bearish here. Uh, I don't think the market is going to fall back and crumble. Uh, there's really strong support at last Friday's low, so the trend is still up, but it's not strongly up, at least not right now. That may change if we get some panic in the market. Sure. So uh, hopefully I, that answers that question. Yeah, so fantastic. Let's, let's take a look at the uh, gold market, see what it's doing. Absolutely. We're coming back a little bit today as well, which is nice. Yeah, uh, chart four is it's kind of a double buy signal here, two different methods. Okay. Uh, this is uh, chart four is the inflation deflation ratio RSI, which uh, I think it was last Friday got down at 29.69. It has to only be around the 30 range. It got below 30, which is good. And if you notice, I have a uh, the middle window is the inflation deflation ratio, and I have a blue or a, a shaded green area if you notice that's kind of a triple bottom right there that kind of adds to the the likelihood this is probably some sort of a, a significant low uh, i put dotted red lines across the chart when this rsi of this ratio got below 30. Uh, so it works out pretty well uh, so that's one bicycle of a method and chart five is another method uh, this is uh, the top window is gdx with this Bollinger Band, next window down is the accumulative up-down volume with this Bollinger Band. Next window lower is advanced decline, cumulative advanced decline with the Bollinger Band. The bottom window is the GDX GLA ratio. And short-term highs and short-term lows can be found when uh, three of the four indexes uh, touch the upper Bollinger Band or the lower Bollinger Band. And the last, uh, I don't know, about the same time the inflation deflation RSI got below uh, 30 this this one triggered also and if you notice all which is that shaded green area there all four of those indicators got below the lower Bollinger Band so that triggered a buy signal and uh, these signals last a while um, some you know sometimes weeks sometimes months but uh, this one I think is at least probably a week is uh, it's, it's, it's a, a decent signal. You should be long GDX right now, but how long should you stay long? Um, actually, let's go to chart seven. We'll come back to chart five a little, or chart six a little bit later. Okay. Let's just jump to chart seven. So, you know, we hit a high uh, back in mid October, up around 44. And if you notice, the last decline broke below. This is GDX in the top window. GDX broke below the two previous lows of October and September. So that kind of yeah. uh, 
puts the kibosh to the uptrend uh, on a short-term basis. This is not like a major high of any consequence, but it, it did break the uptrend before. We were making higher highs, higher lows. That's the definition of an uptrend on a short-term scale. But on an intermediate term scale here, since we did go below the previous two lows of, of uh, September and October, that the yes. next, the next the well, previous high is up will be resistance, and that's probably where we're going to be heading. Sure. So. Well, Tim, stay right there. I know we got some more to talk about with gold. Folks, we'll be right back with Tim Ward of the Order Oracle right after this break. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds for both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN educating investors tfnn has launched the tiger's den hosted at discord tfnn has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours the tiger's den available to all tigers and tigresses for just one dollar for the year there's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders just visit the front page of tfnn.com this program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, everyone. This is Jacob Shoup. I'm joined right now by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. We're just taking a look at the condition of GDX Gold. Uh, Tim, what else are we looking at here? We're on chart seven before we went to the break. Yeah, yeah we'll keep, uh, keep on chart seven here. but. Yep. Uh, yeah, chart seven. So, anyhow, we go. We went below some previous two lows. So that kind of a, puts a kibosh to the uptrend. So, does that mean a top of any consequences? No, it's probably just going to flip sideways here. I, I meant to do a Fibonacci relationship from the low of GDX, wherever that was. I don't have a, a chart right in front of me, and see where that Fibonacci pullback, you know, that 35 range, wherever. It was was the previous low here how big of a Fibonacci relationship pullback that was it was like a 38.2 percent retracement then this potential sideways market could be the the move of 
halfway move or the next move up. I meant to do that, and I got distracted. But anyhow, my uh, my thoughts on short term here, since we got a, a bicycles on kind of two different indicators that both of them have been reliable in the past, at a minimum, we should get back to the previous highs of 44. And I think that 44 range is going to be a resistance area. So we'll have to see uh, when and if we get back there. But I think we're going to go back there. But I think that 44, the first time up, is going to be resistance. And so I think a trading range may be developing here where 44 is resistance and 35 support. Um, time will tell. But uh, I think we just flip sideways probably into March of next year, February of next year. Right. So it's kind of doldrums i'm not afraid of any high of, of top of any consequence that we're just going to go into some sort of a trading range and we're due for a trading range because this market's been rallying i think of since march of last year right uh, the short-term signals were, were triggered then longer-term signals started to, to come in there's one at may um so anyhow the bigger trends up so let's flip to chart six perfect so this is a chart that once it's bullish, you actually should stay bullish. Uh, this chart goes back to 2010, and uh, all it is is uh, the bottom window is a cumulative up-down volume on a monthly monthly time frame. Next higher window is a cumulative advanced decline uh, uh, with this Bollinger Bands, and top window is uh, GDX uh, with this Bollinger Band on a monthly time frame. So this all all this chart. Is is on a monthly time frame, and the monthly time frame rule the the weekly and, and the weekly rule of the daily, the daily rule of the hourly, and you go all the way down. So as long as the monthly stays on a buy signal here, the the longer term trend remains up. The last time this this signal before this one was a signal back in looks like about January 2021. It fell below the mid Bollinger Band, pretty much stayed on a sell signal until March of this year. So that was uh, what three year sell signal, mm -hmm. and uh, and now we're we're flipping to a a buy signal. Uh, the minimum it should last is a year and a half. So that takes us into uh, actually November of next year. Uh, probably going to be longer than that. But uh, anyhow, we're due for consolidation. Bigger trends up. We may flip sideways in a trading range going into probably February of next year. Then from there, we'll start working higher again. How high is high is hard to say. Uh, it depends how this sideways trading range goes. I did, like I said, I wish I did a Fibonacci relationship before I got on the program. And if it did, if it did come in at about 38.2 percent retracement, then this sideways trading range between 44 and 35 could be the halfway point of the next move up. So that would give a a pretty higher target. So we'll see how that plays out. So, but yeah, the view on gold still looks good. Um, got at least another year to go, maybe longer. So. Um, I don't know where you want to go from Fantastic. here. Fantastic. No, no. I think that I think that sounds great to me. Um, I believe we're not going to have next Thursday with you, but you'll be on Tuesday again. Um, we're looking forward to hearing some more analysis. And again, folks, if you want to get more uh, from Tim Ord, you've got to go check out Ord-Oracle.com. He has his book, he has his newsletter there. And additionally, we have the services tab on TFNN.com. We have the secret signs of market tops with Tim Ord and the six secret ratios every trader should know. Uh, Tim, thank you so much for coming on. We really appreciate your insights every Tuesday and All Thursday. Right. See you next Tuesday.